Hello everybody, just thought I'd make a little video here to show uh, my test for trying to survive this Florida heat and um, with a little blue out here. Um, it's actually an overcast day today as you can see here. And I think the temperature outside here is in the um, mid 80s. I'll double check that later. And as you can see I've got a little blue all open up with all the um, doors open so we can get a cross breeze through and by the way it is kind of windy I don't know if you can see the branches are moving I'm actually out here almost all by myself anyhow um, it is hot it's humid out here um, I had just purchased this um, little thermometer and clock here uh, a couple days ago. Got it actually for only a buck from Goodwill, but it has a, a thermometer on it, and right now it looks like it says 87. So it is going down in here with the wind blowing through and sitting in the shade. But earlier, when I had the vehicle sealed up, the temperature was hitting um, 99 to 100 inside the vehicle. So I'm looking at it right now, and I think the temperature outside is probably about 87, 85, somewhere in that range. So by opening up the vehicle, um, like it is right now in the daytime, and with it being overcast, it's um, fairly cool in here. Not super cool because it is very humid. But um, this is just one thing that you can do to cool down is basically just open up all your windows and let the wind blow through. Now, the other thing that I might do, I don't know if I will or not, because this vehicle has to stay stealth, is, as you can see, I've installed a, um, well, a luggage rack. And the plan is, if you actually have a luggage rack, you could run, like, a luggage carrier up here and leave the gap. See how there's a gap here? And put, um, maybe that, um, that vinyl or plastic wall covering thing that they have at Home Depot across the bottom of the um, luggage rack and what you'd create in essence is um, a hat or a shade for your, your vehicle so that um, if you had to park somewhere where there weren't trees available you're basically carrying your own shade. Now I may or may not do that because as I said this vehicle has to um, is a city vehicle and has to function under stealth mode so putting a hat or a luggage rack with that white thing on here would kind of make this vehicle stand out and what you can do is uh, you know to help with gas mileage if you run it up along the top and curve it down you know so that it closes up here at an angle you could put uh, magnets or something to hold it in place and um, that should give you some portable shade that goes with you and the reason you're doing that is because you're basically making a false roof, but you're leaving the airspace under here. about It's about an inch and a half, two, three inches tall for air to circulate through so that the actual roof itself doesn't get hot. So that would be my tip for um, you know trying to create um, your own shade to, to try to stay cool and survive in a vehicle. I'm still working on um, some solutions that can be done that don't require too much power. You can see my ripped apart homemade AC unit here. It essentially is a, um, it's like $2.25 from Walmart. It's a single use foam cooler. And all you do basically is you take the top and you cut off a circle like that, get your 12 volt fan, and just cut a, a slit here for the air to blow out. And what you put inside is like ice and a little bit of water. And then um, let me get let me get the fan to show you actually how the whole unit would work. Okay, I don't have the unit set up right now, but you can see it's just basically a cooler, styrofoam cooler. I just cut a slit here for air to blow out. Um, some people build real elaborate ones where they put pipes and all sorts of stuff. I don't think you need all that. Um, you just basically want to have a slit where air can blow out. And what you do is you put ice inside with a little bit of water. And you set your cover on it like that. 
Then you put your little cheapo Walmart um, 12 volt fan on top of it, just like so. And turn it on. Once you turn it on, the air from the fan will go down into the cooler unit and hit the ice and water, which is uh, producing cold air, and force it out right here. And then you just point that at yourself while you're sleeping, and it should cool you down. Um, it tends to not work as well when the air is humid like it is right now, but um, I have used it, and it did make it feel cold inside. I mean, so cold that I was getting goosebumps and I had to shut the unit off. Um, the only problem I have with it is uh, the fact that you have to get ice every day, and also you're using up um, power. Now the power you can recharge if you have a solar um, power setup, which I don't. So I'd have to somehow charge my house battery on a consistent basis. Um, I will use it if I have to, and um, would use it, you know, if if, if, if I needed it. But um, the like I said, the problem is just trying to get it charged up every day because you're you're pulling power. So I'm trying to come up with systems that um, basically allow you to stay cool without using too much power or any power. So the easiest thing is um, basically parking in the shade, you know, and opening up all your windows if possible. I haven't opened up the the side here, but I will be, you know, if I were sleeping in it. And then you know you got issues with mosquitoes and other wildlife trying to get in so those are things I'm still working on I'm trying to devise some kind of um, mosquito netting or something that can be easily put up and taken down and also a way to secure the, uh, the vehicle openings so that even though you have it somewhat open at night um, animals and even other people don't come up and just get right into your vehicle so that's where we're at right now as far as um, my staying cool experiment and um, we'll see how it works in, in, in the field when I actually use it um, right now. I mean, I've, I've used it before and I've done, done these things before and they work. But um, I haven't really used it in this particular vehicle. Oh, the, uh, the other thing I, I can point out that can be useful when it's sunny is to get a spray bottle um, and fill it with water. This is a, just a simple plastic spray bottle that I got from um, Dollar Tree, and as you can see, I got some water in it. And all you do is just put water in it, and you can mist yourself. Well, it doesn't seem to be misting very well. But basically, you, you spray it, and it produces a mist, and you can wet yourself down. And when your fan blows on you, or the wind hits you, it actually uh, will evaporate the water and cool you down. Now, what I might try to do is actually mist, like, because I'm in Florida right now and it's kind of humid and hot. Um, I don't think I want to mist myself when I'm sleeping, then you'll be laying there all wet. But what might be useful is getting a, a basically just a sheet and misting it down with this thing so it's damp but not soaking wet. And then turning the fan on here and letting it blow at you while you're sleeping under the, the um, damp sheets. Be, the theory would be that as the water evaporates from the sheet, it you know cools it down, and because you're underneath, you cool down. But um, that remains to be tested, and I'll let you know what happens when I try that out. I'm trying to avoid having to actually get ice every day and running this fan every day all day long, um, because that uses a lot of power, and getting the ice means you constantly have to spend money. So. Um, Stay tuned, and, and I'll let you know how it goes. Before I sign off, I um, failed to mention, and, and really should mention, that the easiest way to stay cool is to be in a cool environment. Now, um, these tips that I just gave uh, in this video here are for people who are, like me, stuck in a, a particular area and can't leave for whatever reason. Like, you're either out in the middle of the desert where it's hot, although it gets cool at night over there, or you're stuck in a place like Florida where it's hot all day and all night. Um, if you can actually move to a higher elevation, like, like instead of staying in Florida during the summer, which is crazy, um, and traveling to a location such as uh, Colorado or maybe even Arizona, where, you know, some place where you can be up um, in higher elevation, um, it's a lot cooler over there and more manageable. I think um, it's easier to bundle up and wrap yourself up in a, a good sleeping bag 
that they try to cool down in an environment where it's like 90, uh, you know, 90 degrees outside and humid. So that would be my biggest tip. So if you're not confined to any given area and you have the luxury of moving, um, go where it's cooler. Then when it gets cool there, too cold, you can come back to an area such as Florida or some other place where the, the temperature is a lot um, warmer. Um, that would be my biggest tip for staying cool without using, you know, too much energy. Um, I hope these um, tips that I gave here are useful and they try to keep you somewhat cool. And um, we think, oh, oh, there's one more thing that you can do, which I actually do. And that is, I don't spend time in the vehicle during the daytime. Of the time when when I'm um, parked somewhere, stealthing in a city, and it's warm, um, I don't stay in the vehicle. I hang out at the library or at the mall, or uh, you know, um, store somewhere where there's free air conditioning, or else I park over at a park like this. This is a, a nice park area here, where there's a nice breeze and it's nice and cool. Where I'm on the beach. Just sitting in the vehicle cooking. Um, my vehicle is actually used primarily as a place to uh, sleep, you know, lay down and rest, sleep, and cook food. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know if you've noticed, I've um, removed some items here. I had a, a little um, burner here, one element burner, and a little toast or oven here that I've removed. And the reason I did that is I'm in the process of converting low blue for full time living. And the burner element required 1,000 watts. The, um, I think the, the little toaster oven required also 1,000 or 1,200 watts or something like that. And I don't plan on generating that much power. So that means those devices won't be useful to me unless I'm, you know, plugged into on a grid somewhere at a house or somewhere where I can connect, which I'm not planning on doing. Items and use the space. So what I'll be doing is turning um, these these um, drawers here into food pantries and just putting um, food and other supplies in here so that I can um, basically be off grid for a while if I need to be. Although I still plan on cooking with the inverter um, as needed.